Welcome in YouTube family. Today we're doing a little bit of torch cutting. Not only are we gonna use acetylene, we're also gonna try our hand at some propane too. Stick around. Okay, so check it out. I put together a little pro and con list, the differences between propane and acetylene. Today we are gonna cut with both of them, but we still have to go over a few things on why one isn't used all the time versus the other. And I'm sure a lot of welders have their preference. I've actually never used acetylene in my home shop until today. I actually got us a bottle so we could do this video for you all today because I've been running propane in my shop for years. Most precision cutting that I'm doing, I'm using my plasma cutter, my Thermacut Extra Fire 85. It goes on either the hand torch or my CNC table and variable wise, I can get a really clean cut and I can work on so many thicknesses of metal using the Thermacut instead of using a torch. Now, the reason why I've had propane is because you can still cut with propane, but I use it mostly as a heating element. It is very versatile. You can use it for anything. I mean, for cooking, for heating, for metalworking, you can use propane for so much more. And that's why I have a big bottle of propane outside that I use for a lot more than just metal fab. Some of the pros to propane is it's cheaper, right? It's cheaper to get, it's a lot easier to find. And that goes to acetylene being one of the cons is it's a little bit more expensive and it's harder to find. You can't just go down to your local gas station and pick it up or get a bottle filled up anywhere. The reason why is it's a much more volatile gas, acetylene is. You gotta be a little bit more careful than with say a propane bottle, which I think is a little bit silly because with any fuel gas, you should be really careful with moving it around. Another pro to the propane would be working on thinner metals. The reason why thinner metals being the case is because it doesn't have as high of a heat input as acetylene. About an eighth of an inch, you really don't need to be trying to cut any kind of sheet metal anything with some acetylene but you can get the right tip and cut some thinner stuff with propane but still I'd be probably working over to get my plasma cutter or just a cutoff wheel at that point. Less heat input especially on thicker metals does not make propane an ideal choice because it doesn't get as precise of cuts. I think we're going to see that today. In my experience I usually have to fight some of the settings on my oxygen propane versus say my acetylene because I have to use some higher pressures in order to sometimes just so much as match the same cut as the acetylene. You do have other gases that you can use outside of acetylene like propylene which is a mix between the two so there are some gases that you can cut with even hydrogen nowadays is a source that you can use to cut with but today we're going to focus on these two things now we can get everything set up and really get some visuals on which one is top tier when it comes to cutting. Okay, so as far as bottle set up here, you can see there are two different size bottles. I've got my big propane tank right here. This one cost me about 75 bucks to fill up, right down the street, right out of my neighborhood. Easy to find someone to fill up a propane tank, whereas the acetylene on the other hand, this cost me about 85 bucks to fill up and it's a 125 owner bottle, it's a lot smaller. If you're trying to buy, an acetylene bottle, definitely check that expiration date. A lot of places will actually take a bottle and just charge you extra to recertify one. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for one. As far as cutting pressures today, we don't want to cut anything different. I actually looked up the cutting tip chart for Victor torches and those are the tips that we're going to use today versus propane versus acetylene. There wasn't a whole lot of different in the setting charts that they have. Now I think as a welder who's used them before, I adjust things a little bit differently, but we're going to go off the tip chart for both of these so we can really see some of the changes in the cuts. We're going to keep our gas at about 5 psi which with our oxygen somewhere around 30 psi. Typically do about a 3 to 1 ratio for this one and a usually a 2 to 1 ratio for this one. That being said, you don't really want to ever go over 15 psi when it comes to working with acetylene. It becomes unstable. It's just not something you do. Usually the only reason why you'd want to turn up some pressure is because you're starting to get up in material thickness. And when that becomes a problem, you definitely turn up the pressures and then we got to change our tips out. Now, I don't think I mentioned it, but you don't need a different regulator in order to run these two different bottles. Even your little gas grill bottles that you can get at the gas station still have the threads on the inside where you can screw in that same regulator. They're all left-handed thread. They should all fit. Mind that whenever you're getting to it. We are going to be running the same torch for this. It's just going to be one of your Victor torches. It's going to be able to run both the acetylene and the natural gas. The biggest differences are these two tips. You have your natural gas tip and then you have your acetylene tip. The biggest giveaway on these is the natural gas tip. The two pieces, they come apart. They kind of slide together and just drop right into the torch. That's kind of the given sign for it. Whereas these acetylene tips are usually one piece tips and that's kind of obvious. The biggest thing is that circle on the middle is the size tip that you're going to want to use. We're going to try to cut half inch thick steel today. So we're going to use size zero tips, 
both of these tips in size zero are good for three eighths to half of an inch. So we should be good cutting this half inch plate steel with it. As you go up in those numbers from say double zero to single zero, one, two, three, four, five, that circle in the middle, that oxygen hole gets bigger and it's used to cut thicker material. So keep that in mind when you're selecting the right tips. If you accidentally keep your natural gas tip on and you're running acetylene, you'll quickly find out that that's not gonna be a good idea because it will burn up all those little fins on the inside of that two piece torch and it will just melt that sucker. Whereas if you try to run an acetylene tip on a natural gas rig, you're gonna notice it's just not cutting right. It's gonna fight you, it's gonna pop a lot, you're just not gonna have the right success. Always double check things. We're gonna go ahead and screw on the acetylene tip first, and then we're gonna try to cut this half inch steel. We're gonna scribe it out, I'm gonna make a square cut, and then we're gonna try to make a little bevel cut, see which one performs better. All right, I got my line scribed on there. I've got some T5s on, some Shade 5 cutting glasses. I'm gonna light that up, get rid of that black smoke. Should be good now. I'm gonna put just a Scotia preheat on here. I mean, come on guys, it's half inch. You should be preheating this stuff. We're gonna try to cut it nice and square. This is with the settling, five PSI and 30 with a size zero tip. Looks like a pretty decent cut to me. I feel like I could keep a little bit of a straighter line. Ultimately, there's not a whole lot of dross on the backside. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm trying to keep things nice and square. That's the other thing. Pretty normal kerf width, all that good stuff. Now I'm going to scribe a line on the backside and we're going to put a little bevel on it. Hopefully I don't put a freaking ugly bevel on this thing. say I'm super proud of that bell. I mean, it's kind of straight, but it's definitely really dirty. I got a lot of dross on there. I don't think it's necessarily the torch's fault. However, you can always do your best and grind the rest. I don't know if you guys have ever tried these 3M Cubitron 3, these fiber discs, but them you'll put a bevel on there faster than that torch will. When in doubt, just grind it out. You'll make something worth welding. All right, so I've already went and swapped my regulator over. I've went and swapped my tip over. We're running the same pressures as we were before. I don't know if that's acetylene or not. We shouldn't get all that black smoke. There it goes. Now that we got propane, we don't have much of that black smoke. Judge it based off this tip. If I see that it's blowing away from that tip, I want that fire to kind of connect to that tip again before I start introducing some oxygen. There we go. A little bit of preheat. Again, I flipped this plate over so that other side wasn't as hot. We get more of a similar results. Definitely taking a skosh longer to get the edge of this plate hot. Man, this is honestly cutting pretty good. I'll be honest. I'm a little surprised that it did that well. And again, this is one reason why I've always used propane in my shop at this point is because it's still at half inch thick. It's still not that big of a deal. It still gets the job done. There's some bumps on here that I didn't have before. I don't know if I can blame it on the gas. I think that was more my fault. Maybe we'll see some different evidence here when we try to put a bevel on it. But so far, man, it's really not that big of a deal. Oh man, I think I just might be getting better at this. That cut really good. And comparatively speaking, I did cut a little bit different than I did on the acetylene one. I didn't get all the way down to that edge like I did on this one. What I did notice is whenever I was cutting, it did lag behind. What I've always seen, especially with propane and propylene, is it, it, it doesn't have that smooth of a cut, especially when you're starting to get into thicker metal and these angles like that. It has these little grooves and divots that it seems to always want to, almost like it wants to bounce out of the cut, and that's no good. We can still clean it up real quick, get a nice bevel on there with this fiber disc. There's another bevel on there. It's just as good as the other side. I do kind of want to try the acetylene one more time at an angle. I feel like I didn't do it justice. Went ahead and put the acetylene back on, swap the tips back. A little propane still in there, and there's the acetylene. 
There's definitely a sound difference. I feel like a lot less turning of the knobs is needed for the acetylene, meaning I'm not using as much gas. Ah. Oh, come on, Austin. Have your face full. You deserved it. Every time I try to do something better, it always blows up in my face. Was that so hard? Now that's more what I wanted to try to accomplish with the acetylene. It really came down to some travel speed issues. I just needed to pump it up because that's what the acetylene's all about is cutting fast. I think it cut a lot better than every result so far. There's hardly any dross on the bottom of it. There's still some little pits and stuff, but again, I think that's more on me than anyone else here but a lot less grinder is going to be needed if you can use the torch properly. But if you're like me, where a lot of cases, I don't really cut a whole lot of half inch thick stuff. I got a plasma cutter for that kind of stuff too. Now I got some acetylene, which is nice. And I didn't even need it because I still had propane and it could still get the job done. Consider all these things when you're trying to find yourself a torch setup. The bottles and the gas is most expensive stuff. For me, I wanted some propane because I can still cook some cheeseburgers with it. I hope you guys took some value out of this episode. I know I had a good day making it, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Looks like a pretty decent cut to me. Wait, that's not the cut, that's, wait, what side is it? That's the plasma cut, that's the torch cut. Whereas the acetylene on the other hand, this one cost me close to 85 bucks. Jeez, that scared me. Whew, that piece of tin, man. Thought I'd turn this wrong. Anyway.